survival preparedness for beginners and this is cooking with survival all right now we're going to start showing you exactly how to utilize some of your gear that you may have for emergency situations or maybe just for fun for camping and anything else you know if you're going on a long trip you may want something like this a deluxe oven all right or if it's just going to be a nice little weekend getaway or something you may want to go with the coleman stove you know they both work really well we're going to be using both of these products today and i hope you all enjoy what we're going to be doing one really little thing I want to make sure that I do show everybody, and that is all my lights and stuff are being run on my battery banks. But let me show you that real quick. And then I'm going to go get all the ingredients for our dish today. Today, we're going to be making a chicken and rice vegetable bake. Okay, we're going to be cooking stuff on the stoves, and then we're going to be putting it in our handy dandy little oven right here. And this way here, we have dinner. Now we're simulating this as if we have had a hurricane or are going through a hurricane, which it, we really don't have any wind, do we? Wait, we can fix that. Let's put some wind in this. Okay, there we go. Now we got a little bit of wind noise. You know, you got to have a little wind if you're going to have a hurricane, right? So this is a simulation of what you could do if you do have a garage the power's out and everything else, the storm is raging outside, put all this into your little uh, brain and comprehend and visualize what we are doing. And we're going to cook a meal so that we have something to feed our family in an emergency type situation. So stay tuned, we're going to show you the batter banks real quick and then we're going to get our ingredients and get cooking, folks. Okay, so, real quick, this is my 300 watt Rock piles, battery bank. Plugged in my extension cord. I have this one running over here to this one big light. And this one here runs over here to this big light. All right, those are two huge lights. Now, over here, I have my nice little 100 watt, okay? That was my uh, one that I got at Walmart for 50 bucks on clearance, and that's running my small little spotlight right here. So as you can see, I'm running these off my battery banks. And this way here, you can see that these are actually really working and that we're lighting up our whole situation. As you can see, all right, everything is being lit up really nice. We can adjust the lights, we can move them around however we need to do it, but we can do it. Battery banks, the way to go, folks. Okay, here we are, and now, We've got all of our ingredients and everything on this table right here. We got our pots and pans out. We got our pot for our rice. We're going to cook our frying pan because we're going to saute up a little bit of the canned chicken from our preps. Okay, we do have some other instruments here. I have my bowl with my strainer, and I'll need a spatula and a spoon. Okay, now. One thing that I will say is, want to make sure that you get everything ready, and this way here, you're ready to go. Have a plan. That's why I talk about maybe making up some recipes pre-emergency type situation, so that you are all ready to go, you know what you exactly need, and there's no guessing, there's no anything else. You can go pull what you need and be cooking in no time. So now, I'm gonna go over all the ingredients that we have for today's cooking video. And this is Survival Preparedness for Beginners, and this is Cooking with Survival. Here we go. All right, so we're gonna start off. We need our baking dish to put all this in, to put it in the oven. For our rice, okay, I did grab one of these out of my uh, pantry. All right, this one was packed on 10, 19, 2019. This is one cup of rice. So we'll need two cups of water. Now, most people will probably have bottled water. All right, <clears throat> so we're gonna measure out exactly two cups to put in with our rice. We are doing some cream of mushroom soup, pull top. All right, we're gonna add some mushrooms to this, pull top. All right, and some green beans, pull top and a can of chicken, 
pull top. Now, that's why I said it's so important to make sure that you do have pull tops, okay? Because it makes it really easy for you to open up the cans and do what you need to do really quick. But always have that manual can opener handy because not all cans come with that. All right, now we're moving over here. We have one tablespoon of butter here. All right, our spices today, the stars of the show. We have salt, we have pepper, we have onion, garlic powder, both of these are powder. And then for the topping, we do have some parsley and some paprika. All right, now I did do a video and stuff on these quite a long time ago. And I do have all my spices all sealed up in small Mylar bags. There are probably about 40 different spices that I have that are all sealed in Mylar bags and ready to go. We have our strainer, spatula, spoon, and this is just our little catch drip pan here because we're going to drain all those except for the, obviously, cream of mushroom soup. And we have our pot right here. We have our stove and our frying pan that is ready to go. All right, and then we're gonna move over here. We're gonna be cooking the rice up here on this burner right here. We'll show you exactly how that gets going. And then we have our oven right here. <clears throat> As you can see, you have your oven control and you also have your temperature gauge. So we're gonna get going on this video right here and start getting things cooking. So stay tuned, folks. Here we go. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is make sure you got your gas and everything all hooked up. It's all nice and tight and you don't have to worry about it. All right, now you wanna make sure you turn on your burner. You need, for your Coleman stove, you will need a lighter, matches, whatever you have, all right? So you turn on your burner, get that going there. All right, we wanna turn the heat down a little bit because we don't wanna burn it. So we adjust our heat down, then we can put our fire on, all right? Now, take and open up your chicken. Can be a little messy. All right. Now we want that chicken to drain a little bit. We're just going to set this right over here. Always make sure that you do have some paper towels for a towel. This way, here you can wipe your hands as you go. You don't have to keep uh, turning around and going somewhere else. All right. So our pan's starting to get warm, so let's put our butter in. All right. Now I like just to move these around a little bit. This way here we can get some more of that water out of there. All right, now you don't have to do this step. All right, now I'm just trying to season this to make this taste good. All right, because in an emergency situation, it's still all about taste, right folks? So we're gonna move this around Get this going. Our butter's starting to melt, as you can see. We're cooking with gas here, folks. Slow and low. All right, you don't want to burn anything. All right, now, let's just move those over a little bit to one side and let them just keep draining a little bit. All right, so next, we're gonna go in and we're gonna grab the mushrooms, all right? now. A lot of these recipes, if you don't like mushrooms or anything that I'm putting in here, you can substitute your own things. You can put corn, you can put green beans, uh, carrots, whatever you would like. Uh, today I'm using, like I said, the green beans and the mushrooms. So we're going to take and pop this top here. Pour the mushrooms over on the other side. So they drain. I'm going to get some of that water and stuff out of there. Is melting nicely. Hear that sizzle? That means for all of you out there that don't cook, when your butter starts to sizzle and it is liquefied, it's just about ready to start putting some of this in here because you don't want your butter to burn. So let's get this right in there. OK, 
Okay, so while that's going, we need two cups of water, right? So, we can take and move these dishes out of the way. Look at that, folks. Two cups of water is basically one bottled water, all right? That's 16.9 uh, ounces, all right? So just remember that, if you don't have a measuring cup, this equals two cups of water, folks. All right, so we're gonna pour this in our pot here. All right, and now we're gonna come over here to this stove and we're gonna get that lit and get the rice water going, all right? Okay, folks, so we're over here at the stove. Now this stove is great. It has an automatic built-in lighter. See that right there? But if that thing ever does die, you can replace it or just use matches. So you just take and you have to do it a couple times. All right, there we go. Let's turn the heat down just a little bit. I guess we want this to boil. All right, we take our pan of water. You see our stuff over here is sizzling nicely. All right, so we're going to take our pan of water. We're going to put it right up there. Now, at this point, I do like to put in a little pinch of salt. So hold on one second. Let's get the salt. Wait. There's the salt. pull this up here we open up our little pouch we're just gonna pour just a little bit of salt in my rice this is optional folks you don't have to it's all in what you want to do all right so we have that in there now we're going to put our handy dandy lid on and wait for the water to start to boil maybe we'll turn it up a little bit and get her going all right so now we need to come back over here and check out. All our stuff over here. That smells good as it is right now, folks. All right. Now, let's grab some more spices and move on down the line. Okay, so we're gonna spice up our dish a little bit. All right. We just put a little bit of uh, salt in the uh, water over there. I'm just gonna put just a little bit here. Just a little. All right, and when you're done, these pouches seal right back up. They're great. Just get a little bit of pepper. Now, a lot of people in my family uh, are crazy about peppers, so we'll just use a little bit. Now, if that is the case, you can use white pepper, folks, because that way there, it's not as potent if you have people that do not. All right, now we're going with the onion powder here. Same process. done with our spices and stuff. Now, we're going to drain our green beans in our bowl. All right, our water is boiling. So, it's time to put our rice on. Here we go, folks. Let's get our rice going. Okay, folks. Well, 
It's time to put the rice in the water. It is boiling. So you just need a knife, a pair of scissors, whatever you may have. Alright. Poke a little hole here. Only do one side. It makes it so much easier. Alright. Now we're just going to dump our rice right into our water. Alright. We're going to give it a stir. There we go. We will put the lid back on. Let it come back to a boil. Never leave an open knife lay around. When you're done with it, close it, put it back in your pocket. You never know if your kids may be in here trying to help you or anything else, so you don't want to do that and jeopardize somebody getting caught. So we're going to bring that back to a boil, and then we're going to lower that heat and let it cook for 15 minutes. Okay, folks. Now, something I like to do. All right, if you're making a dish like this and you need it to stretch out a little bit because you're feeding people, break up some of the green beans, all right? Uh, just, you can use a, they're, they're real tender. Use your spoon, whatever you have, and just break up some of those big pieces, all right? So it's not so chunky. Now, kind of remember, this is an emergency type situation, all right? Now, we don't know when the next time it is going to be that we can cook a meal, so we want to make sure that everybody gets full, and we're using minimal preps as possible. Now, if you had a bigger family, obviously, you could double this. All right, so you do two cups of rice, and that would equal out to two bottles of your bottled water, all right, <clears throat> and two cans of chicken, and so on and so forth. This way here, I mean, if you've got a family of, uh, uh, say, four or six people, you know, it's, uh, you got to make enough for everybody to have at least a good meal. So we just break up some of the pieces like that. And this way here, you know, there's a lot smaller pieces. Now a strainer does come in handy because this way here you can strain off all the juices. You don't want all the juices obviously into the dish here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put these green beans in. And I'm going to move this and get it out of the way because we are done with that. Now we just need our handy dandy spatula. I'm just going to mix this up. You know, if you think it's going a little too much, you know, you can probably turn down your heat a little bit more. You know, the good thing with these Coleman stoves is you can get them pretty low. Yes, it's boiling away. So let's see if we can uh, adjust that off the heat a little bit. All right, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna have to move that real quick. Okay, so I have this as low as it'll go. All right, now some stoves just aren't made to simmer. That's as low as the flame will go, all right? And my rice is boiling away. So we can't have that because we want it to simmer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and we're gonna turn on this stove because your Coleman stove, you can, you can simmer with this bad boy. All right, so let's move our rice from this burner over here to this burner so we can just get it to simmer. And we're gonna turn this burner off see how big this burner is I mean the thing is huge so you'll be able to cook I mean you know a lot of different things uh, especially your coffee that's gonna cook really fast with that burner all right compared to the little burners that are on this Coleman stove here but but I need a simmer now I'm a firm believer in when you're cooking rice don't take the lid off for the time that it needs to cook so if it's 15 minutes as is in this recipe then that's what you want to do Okay, so this is all looking good here. We got all our spices and everything in here. 
and we're just about ready to go once that rice is done to mix it all up and get it into the baking dish over here we will add the cream of mushroom soup here in a few minutes stay tuned one thing to always remember to do as you are cooking especially if you're in a small space like this remember you're not in your kitchen okay so make sure that you're you're cleaning up as you're going along so this way here you've got more space as you use the products and stuff you don't need any more either throw them in the trash if that's where they go put them over to a different area anything else to make sure that you have plenty of room to work to make sure that you can cook okay okay people we're getting there I wish you had smell of vision because it smells really good in here, folks. The rice is slowly simmering in there now, all right? And that still has another seven minutes. So we probably want to get our oven going, all right? So we come over here to our oven and turn. Okay, so we just took and lit our oven here. We'll wait till she gets up, hopefully right around the 300 degree mark. As you can see, she's starting to steam up. First time she's been lit. Down in there, you can see that blue flame right in the center hole. All right. So now it's just a waiting game. Turned off our vegetables and chicken and everything else over here. These are all done and waiting to be all mixed up once our rice is done, which is just about done, folks. This is smelling so good. Wish you had smell of vision so I hope you're enjoying this and showing you how you can cook using your Coleman stove, your Camp Chef oven that is just great. I mean, you get a full-size oven. That'll fit a 13 by 9 cooking dish. You can also put cast iron in there. It will fit. You get two very large burners. It is excellent. So we just got to wait for the rice. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. It's almost time for magic, so we can turn our stoves off. All right, so as you see, both burners are completely off. All right, our rice is done. So, what I like to do is, when you're doing, and you're working with your dish, all right, whichever kind of dish that you may want, right, I like to use a little pan. Now, I suggest people keep this around. Um, you could use a little bit of shortening, just like if you were baking and everything else and take and, and, you know, do the sides up like if you're making baking a cake, you know, but Pam comes in handy because it does it for you, it's just a few, few quick squirts. And mainly it's the sides I worry about. Now these particular dishes, these are uh, my wives, obviously, uh, as you can tell by all the colors and stuff, but these are great, you know, dishes, all right? And they're, they're supposedly like non-stick, all right? Uh, this is an old one we've had for Lord only knows how many years. Now, what I like to do is get my lid off my rice. And as we can see, the rice is all done. Boy, it looks really good. Can everybody see that? All right, so what I'm gonna do is pop the top. And no, I'm not drinking a beer, not yet. That may be on one of these because when I cook, I like to have an alcoholic beverage. I am an adult. I can control myself. All right, so we're going to add this right in. Get all this. In. Now, once you do this, you're going to want to add, because we're dealing with rice here, folks. Now, for you that don't know, rice is still, even after it's been cooked and everything else that you're going to bake, it's going to take and suck up everything, any liquids. So, we really don't want this to be dry. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to add a little bit of water. Now, if you did have milk, you could add a little milk or something like that. All right? But we're doing this off of the preps that you mainly have right at your hand. Okay? So we're just going to add a little bit of water, just enough to give it a little bit of, help mix everything up. Boy, that's looking good.
Now I like to, to want to start off with a somewhat of a wet consistency. All right. You see how that looks? Nice and wet and moist. All right. And we might just add just a little bit more water, just a splash. And now what we're going to do this is we're slowly going to start adding our mix. So we sauteed the chicken, all right? We sauteed up the chicken and the mushrooms. We did those together with a little bit of butter, and then we used the salt, pepper, uh, garlic powder, and onion powder, all right? We let those saute for a little bit of it, so we get a little flavor, all right? You want to make sure that people are enjoying what they are eating. You know, that's the whole key here. It doesn't have to be so bland, folks, you know? So let's just mix in just a little bit of this. We're going to stir it up. We'll do half. Stir. Because you want to try to get it mixed up really well. All right. Our oven is cooking away. We are at 325 degrees. So we're doing well there. Now, the first time that you do use any of your products, if you buy a new Coleman stove, if you buy an oven, uh, anything like that, remember you're going to have to light it and let it burn off a little. It will produce fumes, but that is normal, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. It just, you know, you have to break in all those parts and stuff. And trust me, I'm going to be breaking this bad boy in. So we just added all the rest of the chicken. Our chicken mixture with the chicken, the mushrooms, and the green beans. Now at this point here, you have to make a decision of what you want to do. Do you like the consistency? Now you see how it's, you know, I think it needs just a little bit more water. So let's just put just a little bit more water in. It can't hurt folks, because you throw it in the oven and bake it, then, you know, it's all going to be good. Put a little more water in there because the rice will soak it up, folks. All right. Okay, it's looking good. So now it is time to transfer our dish from our pot right here to our baking dish, as we can see. So I'm just going to pour that right in. Scrape the sides and get every little drop. Because if it is an emergency type situation, you want everything out of that pot that you can get. Because every piece counts, folks. Every piece. Alright? So there we go. We got it in our baking dish here. Alright, that's looking real good, folks. Now, we just want to throw on just a little bit of, you know, make it look really good here. You know, it's no sense to uh, sit here and be dull about this, you know, I mean, <clears throat> being a prepper, you can always make sure that you have all your different preps to make any type of an emergency situation no big deal. Because this way here, you know what? I can still cook just like if there was nothing else going on. Add a little paprika to the top for a little color. Now I love to cook. Now I don't know about a lot of people out there. There are people that don't like to cook anything else. But, I mean, what do you think, folks? I mean, look at that. Doesn't that just look delicious? I don't know if you can see it on that camera view, but we do have two cameras running here. All right, so that looks really good. So now, what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna move over here and we're gonna put it in our oven. So what I did was, folks, put that on the middle rack, all right? Move the middle rack to make sure it's right in the middle. 
And you can just slide your baking dish right in. As you see, you still have clearance at the top. Slide that bad boy in there. Close the door. We're gonna let that cook for about 15 minutes or so and dinner will be ready. Okay, folks, in the last minute here or so before we pull out our dish out of the oven and try it out, let's run over some safety aspects of the situation. You're perfectly safe to use propane like inside your garage or your house. Now, some people may not be feel comfortable doing that, but think of it this way. A lot of your um, gas stoves and stuff either run on propane or natural gas. So as long as you use them in the area, you know, like my garage here is a huge area. If you are worried, make sure you could crack your door a little or crack a window, something like that, all right? Now, if it is during a hurricane, you may not be able to do that, but you are still perfectly safe uh, as far as I'm concerned, okay? Other people in name may not feel that way, so if you're not comfortable doing this type of a situation, then by all means, don't do it. You're gonna to have to find some alternative way to make sure that you can cook food and have food to eat in an emergency type situation. Second, you wanna make sure that you are using metal tables, all right? These are metal tables, all right? Because your stoves and oven, they do get hot, all right? So you can't use a plastic or a wood based table, all right? Now, to buy some of these, you can get them relatively cheap. You can go online, there's a lot of different places that sell them, uh, Cabela's, Walmart carries them. There's all different brands and everything else. You just wanna make sure that it is a metal table, all right? And thirdly, make sure that you are paying attention to what you are doing, because you are cooking in your house just like if you were cooking in your kitchen. All right, so you don't want to burn something, catch something on fire or anything else, because if it was a hurricane type situation, it's gonna be very hard for you to ventilate an area. So you have to pay attention to what you are doing. Now, on that note, it is time to take out our ditch. Now we're gonna turn off our oven here. Okay, our oven is off, all right? Now, make sure that you have, in an emergency situation, paper products, all right? Now, this isn't the Julia Childs where I'm gonna do a complete, you know, real nice presentation on a plate, all right? This is an emergency type situation. The less you have to wash and clean, the better off you are. So if you can eat on paper plates, paper bowls, whatever it may be, your kids can have cereal in the bowls and everything else, you know, they're just a lifesaver. You can throw them in the trash. All right, so now it is time, folks, to bring out the star of the show. Boy, that looks good. Can you all see that? Now I baked it roughly about 350 degrees for 30 minutes. Just keep an eye on it because if it starts to brown up, you know, every oven is a little bit different. So if it starts to brown up a little faster or anything, then you obviously can even reduce the cooking time. So let's just get a little bit of this out of here. It is nice and moist, just like we like it. All right. So in this meal, you're getting all types of good nutrients, all right? You have the rice, so that's a good filler. You have the chicken, all right? So you have a meat product. You have mushrooms and you have green beans and your assorted spices and stuff to make it taste good. Now, <clears throat> if you are staying and bugging into your home and everything else and the power is off, you're probably gonna start wanting to use some of this stuff out of your refrigerator. And that's where we're gonna be going with this uh, little series right here based on a hurricane type situation. Now, if you have a way to cook and everything else, you may be able to help out your friends, family, neighbors, whatever it may be, you know, because everybody's food, if they don't have a generator to run these things, is eventually gonna to start to go bad. So it's better off if you could set up a cook station 
Once the storm has gone by, you can open up your garage door, you can make a cook station in here, people could bring food and stuff over, help you cook and everything else, and you could be cooking and helping out other people in your community and maybe your family members. You never know. You know, we've had situations where family members have come from the West Coast over here and stayed with us during hurricanes. So you have to be able to supply food to those people, correct? So this is a great way to do that. Now, grab yourself some Parmesan cheese. Put a little bit of Parmesan on there. Now you can do this before it bakes, but usually what happens with Parmesan is it'll start to brown a lot faster than everything else. So I like to do it at the end. Now you could mix in a little bit of cheese in this if you wanted to, if you wanted a little cheesy. You know, I mean, the sky's the limit with this dish. You can do so much with it, all right? So now it is time for the taste test. Mix that up a little, and let's see. It is definitely hot, folks. All right, so there's your warning. It comes out of the oven, it's hot. Oh, I tell you what, it's like perfect, perfect pieces. Mmm, how can you go wrong? I mean, really, we just cooked a whole meal using our Coleman stove, our camp chef, all right, that has the built-in oven. We cooked everything up, we threw it in the oven, we baked it 350 for about 30 minutes, it's done, it comes out, it tastes delicious, it's moist, and everything else. And you're supplying the great meal for your family. So this has been Survival Preparedness for Beginners, and this has been Cooking with Survival. And we're going to start doing more of these type of videos and showing you how that you can utilize your gear in an emergency type situation, which is a beautiful thing, folks. One last thing to remember. Once you're all done, make sure you clean everything up, you know, because you're in your home, you're in your garage or whatever. You don't want to have any, like, uninvited guests as far as any rodents, you know, bugs, anything like that. So make sure you clean up the area really good. Make sure you turn off, on, on this here, I'm using my 20-pound tank. So make sure you turn off your 20-pound tank. Just turn the valve right off, and that way you don't have to worry about anything. This one here, I'm using the one-pound tank. Now, if you guys do notice that they do sweat, all right, that's a normal process in the whole situation. It will sweat and it will get condensation. The hotter it is outside, the more it sweats, okay? But that's a typical, normal thing. Now, you can take and unscrew this and then you pop the plastic piece back onto the top, which seals it back off, you're good to go. Once again, thank you for joining me today on this new video series I'm doing Survival Cooking with Survival Preparedness for Beginners. That's me, folks, and until next time, stay safe, stay cooking, get your gear out, learn how to use it before the emergency gets here. Till then, I'll catch all of you on the flip side.